Hello everybody, welcome to the Bird Monkey Show and today we're talking about Gutenberg. Now you may or may not have heard of this project, it's been in the works for quite some time now. And uh, I will tell you that Gutenberg is here to stay, it is the future of WordPress. So in this video, I will explain to you exactly what Gutenberg is and how it can help you create content for your WordPress website. But before we get into Gutenberg, Today, August 3rd, 2018, WordPress 4.9.8 was released. So if you're still running 4.9.7, I suggest you go ahead and update your WordPress to 4.9.8 because just like with any update, there are some major improvements over WordPress in general. You've got coding enhancements and you've got uh, even more widget updates. There's a new gallery widget, by the way, which is really really cool and there's also the press a button add media widget as well side building improvements and yada 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 you get the gist so <laughs> let's now go ahead and take a look at gutenberg now just to give you some history gutenberg itself was named after johannes gutenberg who invented the german printer i believe so I actually haven't confirmed this, but I believe this plugin or this project was named after Johannes Gutenberg. So that's your history lesson for the day. Let me close this out. So what exactly is Gutenberg? Gutenberg is meant to be an editor and it's supposed to replace the classic editor that you have that comes with WordPress by default. The one you use for creating content, the one you would use on your posts and your pages. So Gutenberg is meant to be an improvement over the classic editor. So it's very much like a page builder. If you've ever used Elementor or Beaver Builder or Site Origin, Gutenberg is just like that. Although at the moment, Gutenberg overall is still inferior to these uh, plugin page builders. But in all honesty, Gutenberg is actually a major improvement over the uh, old classic uh, editor for WordPress. Now, if you go to the actual plugin page for Gutenberg, you may notice <laughs> that down here under the ratings, you have 187 five stars and you have an impressive, or rather a very unimpressive 302 one star ratings. Now, do not be deceived by this. The reason why there are so many one star ratings is because earlier when Gutenberg was first released, it broke a lot of websites. It was not compatible with a lot of themes, with a lot of plugins. So there were a lot of angry users who ended up using the plugin and it broke their site. So as a result, they ended up giving the one stars. Today, Gutenberg has been improved. It is now compatible with a lot of WordPress themes and a lot of plugins. And it's not quite nearly there yet. The plugin itself is still, I wouldn't say it's 100% are compatible now with every single theme or plugin out there. But at the moment, I do have some confidence that this plugin will be compatible with whatever theme you are using. But in any case, if it's not compatible, all you have to do is just to deactivate the plugin and uh, keep doing whatever you're doing. So let me now show you exactly how this plugin actually works. But before that, let's take a quick message from our sponsors. Hey there, would you like to acquire skills in web development or cybersecurity? If so, then why not consider enrolling in the WebMonkey Academy today? Created by an experienced instructor, the WebMonkey Academy is an online platform dedicated to providing you with world-class courses. From HTML to CSS to WordPress and even cybersecurity, we got you covered. Learn in-demand skills and launch your career as a web developer or cybersecurity analyst. Start your free two-week trial today and get free access to more than 15 courses with over a thousand hours of content. Check the link below this video for more details. All right, so let's continue. I have gone ahead to install the plugin and have activated it. Now you will see Gutenberg down here. You have the demo, support feedback, documentation, but all of these is not what you need. What we're gonna do right here is I'm gonna add a new post all right, and I'm going to show you how this works. All right, right now you can see that we do have the section where you can add the post title. That's right. This is where you will now add your new post title. So I'm going to go ahead now and say Gutenberg analysis. All right. Now, if you pay very close attention over here to the right on top, you have the save as a draft, although it auto saves. 
you have the preview button, the publish button. This gear button right here will hide your settings so you have like a full view of what you're typing. And then finally, we have these buttons right here, which you can use to switch from the visual editor to the code editor. editor. You can uh, fix the toolbar to the top, show tips, copy all content, and so on. All right. Now, to actually add content, you can come in here and type inside the box where you have write your story. And you can just say something like uh, this post is all about Gutenberg and so on. All right. Now, if you take a look over here to the left, you will see we have a plus button. This is where you can add blocks. Blocks are what you would use to create content. So if I click on plus button right here, we have several sections of blocks. First of all, we have the most used. Now, as you continue to use certain types of blocks, the more you use them, the more likely they are to show up in this section where you have the most used. But by default, you're going to have heading, image, audio. And then we have the common blocks, which is very similar to the, uh, to the uh, most used blocks. You have your list cover image video, subheading, file, and so on. Now you have formatting where you can add your code, classic, your custom, your custom HTML table, pull code, preformatted verse. You have layout elements. So you can add things like your spacing, your buttons, your columns as well, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. And you also have widgets where you can add your short codes, archives, latest posts. You have embeds, which is just awesome, by the way. You can embed posts from Twitter, YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, WordPress, uh, Funny or Die, <laughs> Meetup.com, and so on. And finally, we have the reusable blocks. And I already created one called Z Gallery Block. I'll show you how this works in just a moment. All right, so by default, what you have here is the paragraph block. That is the default block you're going to start with your content. So to add a new block, I'm just going to go ahead now and click on plus. And let's say we wanted to add an image. I'll click on the image block. And now from here, we can either upload an image from, from my computer or we can add from the media library. I'm going to go ahead and click on media library. And let's see, let's just go ahead and choose the Predator. That's right, let's choose the Predator as our image. And there you go. Now, I want you to pay close attention to what we have over here on the right. You have document and then you have block. This is where you can make changes either to the document as a whole or the specific block that you're currently working on. If you click on document, this is where you have access to the regular options of the visibility, the post format. You can stick it to the front page. You can make it make this to be pending a review. And you have access to choose the category. You can add tags. Uh, you can add the featured image, accept discussion, and so on and so forth. But if I go back to block, all right, and I click inside our image block, right now you have access to the settings. So you can add your alt text, you can choose the image size, choose custom dimensions, you can choose to link the image to a specific URL, and so on. If I click on the paragraph block, you can see right now that the settings or that the yeah, the settings that we have over here has changed. Now we have access to the text settings. We can change the custom size, make it bigger, we can add a drop cap, we can change the colors as well. And by the way, every single block you're working on will have the advanced block where you can add CSS classes, by the way. So if you're into, if you're a developer, you know CSS, you have the ability to now add CSS classes directly to your blocks. All right, I'm going to jump over here right now and I'm going to add another block. And this time, let's go ahead and add a spacer. All right. So you can see we do have a spacing block right here, which we can... Uh, expand over here with the height. We can make it taller. We can add CSS class as usual. I'm going to go ahead now and add yet another block over here. And uh, let's, let's go ahead and add a quote. And um, the quote here is going to be, I believe. Wait, how do you spell believe? I believe in Gutenberg. And uh, this is by Alex, a.k.a. the web monkey himself <laughs> all right 
So that's my code. And I can also choose to drag and drop the uh, individual blocks themselves. So to do that, I'm going to click just by the side where you can see that the icon has changed to that of a hand. And I'm going to click and I'm going to just drag and I'm going to drop that down there, as you can see. So it is a little wonky at the moment. You might have some difficulty dragging and dropping individual blocks to different positions. But hopefully that will improve in the future updates to Gutenberg. So, all right, let's just take a look at the preview of what we have so far and see what we have. So the post is all about Gutenberg. We have the Predator who has nothing to do with Gutenberg. And we, then we have our code. Okay, it's looking good. Let me close this. Now, take a look at this. For each individual block, if you look to the right, you will see three buttons. This will give you more options. So when you click in here, you have the ability to either hide the block settings. You can edit as an HTML. So if you are into HTML or you are a web developer, you can come in here and edit the HTML directly for each individual block, which is pretty awesome. Let me switch this back to visual. And then you can do things like you can duplicate the block so you can reuse it on the same post, or you can add the block to something called a reusable block. Reusable blocks are blocks that you can reuse over and over again on different posts, all right? So if, for example, I have created this block and I wanna reuse this block over and over again because, well, I like quoting myself, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and click in here and I'll add this to the reusable blocks and I am going to say I'm going to name the block the prophecy. All right, I'm going to save this. All right. So if I wanted to add a new, actually, you know what? I'm just save this as a draft just to make sure. Save draft. Save in. All right. So if I came over here right now and added a new post, and uh, let's just name this the, the, the prophecy. All right. Now, if I wanted to add that code block that I just created in the previous post, all I have to do is just to click in here, all right? I click on the uh, plus button, and then I can come all the way over here where we have the reusable blocks, and then I can choose the prophecy, and there you go. It's right there. And let's even add the uh, second reusable block itself. Plus, let's go all the way down here, and the gallery block, where we have uh, six individual images all inside the gallery. You can click inside the gallery itself, and uh, let's make some changes in here. Click on the gallery block, edit. All right, so for me right now, you can change the number of columns for your gallery. Make this five columns, make it four columns, three columns, and so on. You can, of course, also choose to crop your images. I mean, there's lots of different options for uh, different blocks. So I would encourage you to spend some time and try to play around with this new plugin, with this new visual editor as much as possible. And just before I round this up, just a few more things to point out. You can choose to undo your actions. You can also redo your actions as well. You also have the I button here, which is pretty useful. It's the information button. If you click in there, you will see you can, it will calculate the number of words that you have. Actually, this isn't correct. Let's, let's refresh this page. This, that doesn't make sense. Let's refresh this page. And okay, press I once again. All right, so now we have four blocks because earlier it said we had eight blocks, which, which isn't true. So now we have four blocks and let's go to the previous post or posts. Let me just leave this. All right, which one? Gutenberg analysis. Let's edit this one. Okay, let's click on the I button right here and see what we have. So we have one paragraph, we have eight words, and then we have five blocks. So this is a nifty button that will let you know just how much content you've actually written. So it's a good way to keep track of how many words and just how big or small your content actually is. All righty, so that's pretty much it for Gutenberg. If you have any questions about this particular plugin, uh, feel free to let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Just put them in the comments section below. And if you've liked what you've seen so far, why not consider subscribing to the channel? 
hit the like button and be sure to hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching the video. My name is Alex. It's been a pleasure and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.